Hello, my name is Jeff Taylor. We're here at the 16th uh, International CROI, which is the Conference on Retroviruses and Opportunistic Infections, which is in Mont sunny Montreal this year. And we have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Ron Mitsuyasu. Um, Dr. Mitsuyasu is with the AIDS Malignancy Consortium, and we're here to have a conversation about um, who they are and, and what they're doing. So welcome, Dr. Mitsuyasu. Thank you very much. So why don't you start by telling us um, who you are and what the AMC is, and we can uh, take it from there. Okay. Um, I'm Ron Mitsuyasu, and I uh, work at the University of California, Los Angeles. Uh, I've been involved in HIV research and patient care since the beginning of the epidemic. And um, my training is in hematology oncology, so I got involved very early on in uh, managing patients with Kaposi's sarcoma and lymphomas. And uh, over the years, I've gravitated to looking at a lot of immunotherapies and novel treatments, both for HIV and, um, and AIDS malignancies. Um, about three years ago, I was elected chairman of the AIDS Malignancy Consortium, which is a National Cancer Institute-funded clinical trials group. And this group has been uh, operating since uh, 1994, uh, doing clinical trials specifically in the area of AIDS malignancies. And over the years, we've uh, done a lot of work to kind of establish standard of care uh, in the U.S. for treatment of various malignancies in the setting of HIV. And uh, now we're branching out and starting to do some work internationally, um, in particular in research limited settings, uh, also trying to define uh, standard of care, uh, but also continuing our work uh, here in the States, uh, specifically looking at novel treatments, trying to uh, define both pathogenesis in the setting of uh, clinical trials, but also trying to develop novel treatments and better treatments. So, so what's happening? Tell us what's happening in, in the world of um, HIV in terms of cancer. I mean, a lot of people think that now that we have uh, more successful therapies, people are mm -hmm. healthier, they're not getting the mm -hmm. KS and, and the lymphomas and so forth that we used to see and used to, to kill so many people so quickly. So how, is, how has that changed? Well, um, as we all remember, in, in the old days, we used to see a lot of Kaposi's sarcoma and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma that would be quite devastating and, and both in terms of quality of life, but also in terms of mortality. And that fortunately has gotten much better. Um, so we don't see as much uh, KS and as much lymphoma as we used to. However, at the same time, as antiretroviral therapy has gotten better and people are living longer uh, with some immune deficiencies, we're starting to see more cancers in general. So many of the common tumors that uh, we would consider non-AIDS defining are being seen with growing frequency both in the West mm -hmm. and also in resource limited places. So um, yeah, it's become a big problem uh, and in fact some of the statistics would indicate that um, malignancies, cancers, are now the second leading cause of death in patients with uh, HIV and AIDS. So it's become again a a, a big problem in the setting of HIV. What kind of cancers are we beginning to see more of that we didn't see in the past? Well, we're beginning to see more uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is virally associated. Um, it's tied to Epstein-Barr virus mm -hmm. in the setting of HIV, not so much in the non-HIV patients, but in the HIV setting. We're seeing more anal cancer, which is uh, human papillomavirus associated. Uh, but we're also seeing some non uh, virally associated cancers such as lung cancer and we're also seeing um, squamous cell tumors, uh, head and neck cancer, oral pharyngeal cancers, uh, just a whole variety of different forms of, of tumors. And uh, our thought is that as people live longer and uh, as aging kind of catches up with all of us, uh, the even more common tumors like colon cancer and breast cancer, possibly even prostate cancer, may at some point uh, become a even bigger part of the uh, AIDS epidemic. Yeah, I think certainly those of us living with the disease realize that you know, as we become healthier, we become more like everyone else and have to deal with the same problems as we get older. Um, mm -hmm. How is it different in HIV in terms of uh, complications of treating cancers when people are also getting HIV therapy uh, over the course of a lifetime? Yeah. Well, there are, I, th I think, several 
issues that make AIDS-related cancers somewhat different than the, in the non-AIDS setting. One is that they occur at an earlier age. So we're seeing cancers that typically are cancers that are seen in the older population now occurring in 30, 40, and 50-year-old men and women with HIV. In addition, the tumors uh, tend to progress a little faster. So at the time of diagnosis, many of these tumors are more advanced, a higher stage, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, unfortunately, because of the uh, problems that we have with multiple drug therapy and side effects from interactions of medications, uh, there is this issue of uh, patients with AIDS not tolerating chemotherapy and radiation as well as, uh, as the non-HIV infected patients. So um, it's, 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 it's an issue that uh, we need to struggle with and need to find some solutions to. Uh, fortunately, our supportive care, supportive treatments have gotten better. Uh, I think HIV doctors, uh, oncologists like myself and others who have been doing this work for many, many years are aware of the added risk of side effects and complications. And so we're able to anticipate that and monitor it a little more closely and, and intervene a lot earlier. Mm -hmm. So that um, has, I think, also helped outcomes. But um, at this point, it's still a very difficult disease to treat, much more so in AIDS than in non-AIDS. Mm -hmm. And uh, so earlier detection, uh, some prevention work, uh, all of this needs to be taken into account and as we manage patients with HIV. So describe for us um, how the AMC is structured and how it does the research in these areas and accomplishes those goals. Well, as you uh, may know, at one time the AIDS Malignancy Consortium or a AIDS Malignancy Research was done within the AIDS Clinical Trials Group. Mm -hmm. And then about 15 years ago, uh, the National Cancer Institute moved the research into its own group. And that was so that we could focus the effort more uh, and specifically on these AIDS cancers. And uh, over the years, the group has evolved so that now we have several working groups that are focused on specific diseases. So we have a Kaposi sarcoma, a lymphoma, an HPV working group. Uh, we also have a laboratory working group which focuses on correlative uh, laboratory science. And we now have an international working group uh, as we broaden our agenda to include cancers in developing countries. So I think that um, you know what we're trying to do is to involve the best minds in the country both in cancer and in AIDS to come up with both novel approaches, new approaches, better approaches to treating these disease, and as biomedical prevention becomes um, you know, more prominent, trying to bring those, uh, those approaches into our research agenda as well. Um, so HPV vaccines, for example, and uh, some other approaches I think will become a bigger part of what we do as the years go by.